Good afternoon, fellow Plexers. Today's video is going to be about a little inexpensive piece of hardware that Daniel, the moderator from the Plexaholics Facebook support group for Plex Server, turned me on to. It's a little signage computer running a Intel i3 1115G4 processor that ships with a 256 gigabyte SATA M.2 drive and 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory split into two 4 gig um, modules. I know RAM is quite expensive these days, but I wanted to showcase what's possible on this very inexpensive computer. And both Daniel and I had submitted $55 bids that were automatically accepted. I tried a $50 bid that was automatically rejected. So I don't know, it cost me a few bucks for shipping and um, or tax or whatever. But for about $60, this was delivered to my doorstep about a week after I ordered it. So it's not a very big system. Um, if you have ever held a NUC computer in your hand, it would be, you know, about this size. So this is a little bit wider than a NUC about as deep and not quite as tall as one. Not very fancy. It has two Ethernet ports on it, gig Ethernet ports, four HDMI ports, and four USB ports. And on the front, it's got a power switch and looks like some sort of headphone jack. So he kind of shows you what's going on under Windows. There is the small drive that has Windows installed, but I have not booted it up under Windows. In case I'm going to pass this unit on, I did not want to disturb this drive. Um, so here's the inside. If you're going to take it apart, you want to undo the screws from this side, but not this one, and then two screws on each edge, and I forget which side, but one side lifts out and then the cover slides. Um, and there's a, there's a wire attached for the fan, and there looks like a ground wire attached for the power. Um, so you can just move the cover enough to get at the M.2, the SATA M.2 drive and the, the memory. Now, this is not my first install. Um, Currently, I'm running Zima OS that we'll talk about in a second. My first install was just a quick and dirty Ubuntu install. I thought I would get more hardware transcoding streams out of this with a really high bitrate 4K media test file, the one that I always use. And then I did a quick and dirty little Unraid install with a single cache pool drive with a Plex Docker container. I was looking for lower resources than an Ubuntu install, and now I've switched to a Zima OS install, which is even lighter than Ubuntu or Unraid, and I'm running a Plex Docker container. So first off, I wanted to talk about a comparison. Um, according to CPU Monkey, this should have more transcoding power than an N150 processor. I'm not really seeing that play out in my test that I've been running, but still for the price of $55, it's a hell of a little machine. If we go back up to the comparison, single core performance is supposed to be a lot better and multi-core performance is a, lot, is a little bit better than an N150 processor. Now I should have probably compared this with an N100 because I did test a B-Link NUC they had that processor so it's similar to the N150 and if we drop down to the iGPU area this does have a Tiger Lake iGPU, which I think is newer than an Alder. Oh, I can't remember which is newer, Tiger Lake or Alder Lake. I think Alder Lake is older, but I probably got that backwards. 
So now this this is not. Um, indicative of Plex server these benchmarks. So Zima OS is great for a headless install and with a system like this do you really want a keyboard and mouse and monitor on it for a Plex server that might be using USB media um, or connecting to NAS storage someplace else on your network. Zima is simple to install you can um, connect USB drives. You can add media to those USB drives easily across the network. Um, and of course, if you're connecting this as a headless unit to a NAS, you'll be adding media to the NAS storage like you do normally. So I have Zima pulled up, installed on this. You see the CPU performance is 23% and I'm using 24% of the RAM. I have a bunch of Plex streams going now with all but one transcoding. So let's go into the Plex web app. This is my test media for 4K. It's a very dense high bit rate HEVC um, media file. So you see right here I have it running not in transcode. When this media is first added to a Plex server it reports a bit rate of 192 megabits per second. It's quite dense. I haven't found anything as dense as this one movie. Lots of times 4K rips will be 60, 50, 80 megabits per second. So after a few days, Plex somehow indexes this, and this 192 will turn into 104. I don't have any documentation from Plex to back me up and I have not found a Plex forum um, post about this but my belief is this 192 is the peak bit rate and you see that when you first add the media to the server and I'm after the server you. indexes it I think you then see the average bit rate so eventually this will become 104 megabits per second to compare with 4k media on your server that's already been indexed so, I don't have any buffering with four streams transcoded down to 720p, and here's my devices. I have an ONN 4K streamer from Walmart, the 1999 one, if you're in the U.S. market. I have a more recent 4K Plus. It's a little bit more expensive. They're both transcoding it down. This is my desktop Linux PC with the HTPC client app that I haven't started the transcode on. This is my 2023 Sony Bravia OLED. Normally I use my Nvidia Shield Pro on that TV, but I'm using the built-in Google TV on that today. And in the basement I have one of my Plex Bench systems. It's a HP Prodex desk with a i5-8500 processor in it and I'm using the HTPC client app under Windows. It's my one test Windows server to force that into a transcode. So unfortunately if I convert this into a transcode 2 I'll get occasional buffering. So let me do that now. I have it off screen I have to be careful with regular movies that aren't public domain to avoid a copyright strike on YouTube. But I've been safe showing a little window. So I'm going to put that into a 4 megabit per second um, 720p transcode. And if we watch long enough, we'll start to see the occasional buffering. So I expect more, more normal 4K media. You'll do more than the 4 or 5 transcode. You saw this one started to transcode a little bit. It's hard to watch all the streams at once. I can hear my living room TV cut out. It says it's playing, but I can't hear it. That buffered again. So with this high bit rate media, 4 is the limit. But that's not bad off from... a low power device 
with an i3 processor, even though it's 11th gen, with only 8 gigabytes of memory. So let me, let me take this out of transcode. So I've done this a couple times before I started filming. This should calm down. So you can certainly stream a lot of direct streams off a device like this. And again, it's a perfect little headless device. You don't need a monitor and keyboard attached to it once something like Zima OS or even Unraid is installed on it. You can certainly use Windows 11 on it. You can certainly use Ubuntu on it. But um, to connect to network storage, I think Zima is the answer. The other option would be Ubuntu with Kaza OS for the same interface, but that's more overhead because you have the whole Ubuntu operating system installed just to get Kaza OS on top of it. Zima's much cleaner, and you end up with the same exact interface. And the Plex container is really easy to configure. So if I go into settings, I use the Linux server image always. Everything's filled in for you, except you have to change the location of the media. Now I'm going to wipe this install and start fresh with another video to show how to set it up. And I'll also show how to set up, let me do this, we plug in a portable drive. I'll also show how to relabel a portable drive so that you can then, let's get out of Plex for a second, let's go into storage. so that you, you can then label your portable in a way that keeps things straight under Plex. So let's go back to Plex. See how this is Plex space USB space media space one? If I added a second portable drive to this, if it was my regular server, I would name it the same way but two. So the neat thing inside of Plex um, or inside the container configuration. Oh, I goof that up. Inside the container configuration, you can set the alias for this drive to the same thing without any spaces. Well, I actually goofed on this. PEX instead of PLEX. And you'll see that in the container configuration where I made that mistake. And I'll save all this for the next video. Right, there's the mistake. I left the L out. So this is the alias you see inside of Plex. And if I created a second um, USB storage drive called Plex USB Media 2, I would add another line to it. And it's, believe me, it's all very easy to configure. Um, and it just, it, it will use less resources than a Windows install or a even an Ubuntu install, and it's it's so simple to get network storage attached to it or USB media attached to it, and it'll just be a rock-solid container. And down the road, if you ever graduate to a larger NAS, you can easily move the container out of this install. So no matter what you run on it, it's still going to give you some good performance, and it's still a pretty good deal. And... You can just search for this on eBay. If you're interested, feel free to tap me if you're running into problems, if you want to go the Zima OS route. And I'll get this video out on YouTube and start fresh with Zima to show how to get it installed. I do have another Zima OS video on my channel. Um, so we'll just go with another series. Thanks for watching and happy plexing.